What is up guys and welcome to another episode of Down South Off-Road and Outdoor. Today we are back over at Mike's Fabrication and Refinishing uh, to get some new rock lights. These are going to be different than anything you've seen before. I know you think rock lights are cheesy. These are legit rock lights that you can use for rock climbing. So stay tuned. guys right off the bat the most important thing on this box made in USA you know we're making it our mission to try to do as many made in USA products as possible these lights come from DCS lighting I told you they're gonna be a little different than any other rock lights that you've seen before and let's pop this box open and show you why so your typical rock lights are gonna mount under your fenders you're gonna drill through the fender and put these those things on these are absolutely no holes drilled so once you pick the model and make of your vehicle, they send you a kit that is specific to that. And let me see if I can, you see all of their connectors are top notch, but let me see if I can find the actual light portion. All right, so here we go. This actually delves into the meat. So these lights, you see these rubber grommets here, these actually slide into holes that are already in your Jeep JK frame. So these lights aren't gonna be just mounted under your fender with a couple of screws. These are gonna slide into your frame holes. They're gonna be very, very secure and they put out a ton of light. So you're actually gonna use these lights to crawl rocks and see what's underneath you. So because I'm a diva, I also opted for their grill lights. And I think these grill lights are magnetic. Uh, but we'll pop open these instructions and uh, I'll let Mike do all the dirty work and see how they hook up. So with everything out of the box, you can see that we've got basically a, a nine light system. Some of the lights are different shapes. You can see this one is magnetized, so it's gonna stick on metal somewhere. So depending on the hole in the frame, that determines what kind of light goes in there. So just a very, very unique setup. These things, there is a video which I'm going to link right after this that shows them dipping these in water, freezing them, and still turning them on, and they still work flawlessly. So these things are super, um, hell, the word escaped me, so I'm just gonna say super strong. But, all right, so there's the setup you get. Now let's pop the instructions open and let Mike do all the dirty work and set them up. So guys, right off the bat, um, they even include all the zip ties you're gonna need. Um, but if you look at the tools needed for this install, it's pretty awesome because you just need a wire snake or something similar, wire strippers, crimpers, electrical tape, and a Phillips screwdriver. And it'll basically tell you right off, well, first off, read all directions, but it'll tell you exactly where to start and where each light goes and where you need to run the wires. Um, and then it even has pictures here so hopefully Mike can uh, make something of this so they wanted us to locate the oval hole behind the front tire Mike where was that other hole right here uh, right here the round hole there and then there is a square hole back here so that's where these lights are gonna run the wires are going to be snaked through the frame. So Mike is going to use his snake apparatus to get that harness pulled into those places. So we're just pulling the wire through. Still coming. So he's just trying to get it. There we go. 
All right, guys, you can see we've got the wire snake through the frame now, and there's the ends that are gonna connect to that uh, light. And then Mike is untaping some of the stuff that he taped up to snake it all through. And we're gonna go up to the next hole to bring it out at. Sorry, thought I, thought I touched your crotch. So you can see now I'm sticking out a round hole, and now we're going up to that front hole. To show you how this light goes in, this is the mid light. You're just gonna push that wire up into the frame and that grommet just snaps right in. That is easy peasy. I'll just do the voiceover so you don't have to worry about sound or anything. Do you need some zip ties? Yeah. Big, thick. Don't no. matter. Because it gave me all sides. All right, guys. We've got this light ready to go in here. And I wanted to show you where one of the lights is going to go. The one that's got a uh, weird shape to it, it's actually going to go into this drain plug. So if you lift up the plastic in the rear, it'll go right there. Oh, so it's not that one. Mm -mm. actually it's gonna go in the drain plug under the jack I guess I should have filmed it but I suck and that just pops back in there that's a pretty neat way to install these things isn't it mm -hmm. super cool And that's also the plug for the drain light? Yes. So both lights plug in there. So that's the drain light and this is the frame light. And then he's just gonna shove it in that tight hole. That's what she said. <laughs> And once that's in there, that's in there pretty good. frame light going in it's got a nice satisfying click when it snaps into that connector I think it's a decent quality connector and guys just look how clean that sits there I know I keep saying that after each one but it's just a super cool way to run your rock lights guys just a little tip if you pull the bolt out on your rear uh, what control arm rear upper trailer arm. yeah uh, you'll be able to run that wire through the frame a little easier. Once we pulled that bolt out, um, the wire just traveled right through really easily. So just a helpful tip. All right, so guys, what is this lot actually mounting on? It mounts on this tube right here that's a cross member on the frame, right under the fan. We're just gonna slide it around there, like so. started I 
Yeah, so you're going to start one side, don't tighten it, then start the other side. And whatever you do, guys, don't over tighten this because that is plastic. Like, it's more like a kind of a rubbery type compound. Yeah. So do you want to name down or do you want to name forward a little bit? Down. I think it's uh, I think it's down. Uh, it's going to kind of interfere with the radiator hose. Well, right that's there. fine. You can leave it, leave it where it's at. That's fine. Let's leave it clocked just forward. Yep, uh, that works for me. Yeah, that clock forward will give you a lot of view up front too, though, so. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it hurt nothing. Yep. All right, guys. So that's technically the last light. Now everything's ready to be plugged into the control box. And uh, I think we're good to go. All right, guys. So the wire from the lights, we're running up the back side here. And then from the passenger side, uh, you can see them. The connectors are here. So they're just going to be zip tied along the back. And then they will tie in to my boss switch here. If you don't know what a boss switch is, it's basically a poor man's S-Pod, but I'll be honest, I like it better than Kim's S-Pod, but that's just me. Alright guys, so we're going to be running the grill lights now. Uh, you can see that they're just magnets and you sit them with the reflector facing out. The light shines in towards your radiator. And then we're just going to run the wire around and it will plug into that plug there. Nice. We'll pull that bolt out and we'll slide it up under there so it's not flapping in the wind out here. Sounds good. Unless you like it. I don't like that look. So we're just going to run this wire under this uh, battery tray mount. I think if I can get it to bend up a little bit. Really, Mike's just going to break everything on. There we go. Well, I got glove. I swear to God, that's the longest bolt ever. So once you get the lights kind of even where you want them, then we're gonna zip tie these wires to that lower support. Just means that if those magnets do some for some reason come loose, they're not going to be flopping in the wind. And he's just trimming those wire ties so we don't look ghetto. So all the wire is ran and we are getting ready to connect it into my switch panel and we should be good to go after that. Some, some kind of something, yeah. Uh, and a whole lot of it. I 
know why my paint scratched, Mike. Uh, probably all those trees and shit in the woods. Shit, <laughs> motherfucker's a parking lot princess. Don't go in the woods. Oh, I forgot. You got the mall lights. Yeah, I got the. Hey, hey, <laughs> they're not mall lights. These are rock lights. <clears throat> so you can bring the bug out of grip. You know what? So that you can <laughs> see where your beer's at if you set it on your bumper. I gotcha. We are going to turn these things on. See if they are lining up and go. Boom. So you can see the little grill lights are on. Now that doesn't look cool in the daytime, of course, but um, boom, that one's on. And let's see if this one is on. Boom. All right, it looks like they're all on. All right, guys. So we got everything in. Um, you see those grill lights there? That's pretty awesome. Um, so everything went in exactly like they said it would. The instructions were, what do you think about the instructions, Mike? Pretty straightforward. Very straightforward. Uh, I don't think we did anything different than they suggested, uh, except loosening that uh, rear uh, control arm bolt, getting it out of the way. It made it easier to snake those wires through the frame. Overall, I'm very happy. I'll uh, stay tuned because you'll get to see the footage of what it looks like in the dark. So it is pretty cool to see that grill lit up like that. And then when we go around to the side, these lights are very bright. Like I said, we've still got a ton of light in the sky, but they are very, very bright. It lights up all the way around. So the cool thing is you can see completely under the Jeep. I'll show you. So the entire ground underneath the Jeep is lit up. Just a super neat way to do lighting, if you ask me. And man, if you think about it, that is perfect for Halloween.